What is going on, class boys and class gals, and welcome back to another Crab's Treasure. Uh, in the last episode, if you recall, I finally beat the Lycanthrope, got through uh, the Rainbow River, and made it to the Oil Drum, I think is what this is called. Which makes sense because it's a giant oil drum. Finally got here and found myself up against a hard wall with Hekia the Intimidator. I, you know, a king crab. I think it's a king crab that I just cannot get by. So, uh, hopefully I can beat Hekia in this episode. And if I do, maybe you all should like and subscribe as a little reward for me for doing such a brave challenge. So, thank you for watching, and hopefully you enjoy the fight. Because I'm probably going to skip to the final one where I actually beat it. My bad again. Dude, oh, don't come back. No, no.
Oh my god, are you serious? That's... All that fighting for that. That is... That is relieving. Okay, now that we're done with that... Um, I wanna see... I noticed that there's something up here. And I'm wondering if I can just scale this way. If I can just kinda cheese it, or... There's something over there, but I don't know how to get to it. I don't know if I should just jump on top of the village on the get to it. I mean, that actually might be a bad idea. Oh, jeez. Okay, I made it through that very narrowly. Let's just use these to get up. Yeah, you can even see what I'm talking about. It's like right there. I think if I get up here, I'll be able to get enough of a jump and just swim over to it. Yeah. No, I can't. How do you get to that? It's just the swim does not last long that long. Oh, there's also something on over there. There's a couple things that I didn't get actually. Oh, yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Alright, fellas, we're around you fight. You got the thing I wanted. I can dip out. I got a shark tooth? What is this? Sharks lose up to 40 of these a week, so they really aren't that special. 35% skewer damage. Oh, I can damn. Interesting. And I saw something on top of the shopping cart, so I'm gonna. I'm not gonna make you watch. I'm not gonna make you guys watch me climbing, so I'm gonna jump up there. Good, good, good. Actually, if it's on the shopping cart, I think I can just do it over here. Oh. still scale this though because i mean i'm already up here might as well try it out oh yeah you can i didn't know this was here until i um had to get the other thing so let's see what's over here Oh, have I been over here? I don't think I have. Because I recognize none of this. So there's, there's a simpler way to get over here. You don't have to take the route I took. I took a very strange route to get over here. But you can really just walk over and look up. And you will be able to grapple over. Um, it's not high enough though. Really? Do I have to like... Contact lens. A lens, soft lens that distorts the image beyond it reveals enemy health bars. Wait, what do you mean? That's it? I scoured all the way over here for a way to view enemy health bars, even though that is something that I already get access to? Oh my god, I didn't have to scale weirdly. I just didn't pay attention. That, I admit, if people got mad at me for this, that is absolutely fair. I wasn't paying attention. Stainless relic. A workable piece of metal. Maybe useful. Maybe someone can turn it into something useful. And that's not all the treasures over here, I think. I don't know what else there is treasure wise, but I feel like I got a lot of them. Where's this one taking them? 
Oh yeah, you just chain one off the other. Interesting. And I have four bar hooks back. I'm just gonna run by these guys. I already been over here. But uh, I'm gonna run back up to the oil drum, and I'll, I'll talk about what I think of this game there. Because I do have, because I do have thoughts about it that I would like to share with you. Now that I have completed both demos, there's no other demo stuff. So I'm done, which is really funny. I I didn't think I was going to be done with it so quickly. I thought it was going to take me a lot longer to actually finish that boss fight. But I was fortunate enough to be able to actually beat the boss in a fair amount of time. So I'm just going to kind of... Um, I just want to do my thoughts in a more clarified manner. Because I've had a thought here, a thought there. But I haven't really had concise um, thoughts to give you guys. And I feel like it would be pretty nice if I did that. So you guys know what the... Heck I'm talking about, so that's understandable. Um, overall, I like the game concept. I think it's really fun, the idea of you playing around as a hermit crab, who is, I guess, fighting through a polluted world. Like, I guess pollution from us humans has gotten so bad that it has affected the world of these sea creatures so badly that it's basically become kill or be killed, but in a way that's not familiar to me. Like, these crustaceans are out for blood on each other now. And I think that that is a very interesting concept. And I, I'm, really, I'm really interested to see how that develops further throughout the story. Um, so, I think the concept overall is great. And I'm looking forward to it. So, um, that is one thing I am looking forward to. But... Here's the thing, and I'm gonna be honest with you. If it's all honesty, not if all honesty, in all honesty, when it comes to the um, demo, the tutorial was fine. You know, it wasn't that bad. The tutorial boss fight that teaches you one of the mechanics being the heavy attacks that will just shatter your shell. As well as just how the boss fights are going to be, you know, like it's going to be tedious, it's not going to be easy, there'll be multiple phases. With some of them, some of them won't have multiple phases, it'll just be tricky in general, like the Lycanthrope. Because, let's be honest, Lycanthrope only had one phase, whereas the Pathfinder and the Intimidator were uh, two two phase boss fights. You know, one broke his bottle and started stabbing with the sharp end of it, while the other one snapped his chopsticks in half, so he had two swords. You know, mayor quotes, of course. We had two swords to um, fight with, which made the fight harder on you. He has a grapple? I know he has a grapple. I wonder if he, like, grabs you with the gun and then in his hammer. That'd be pretty cool, though. But, um, I think the boss, the tutorial was well designed because it introduced you to the fact that there would be bosses in multiple phases as well as one of the major um things right here is gonna be another common order we're gonna talk about that in a minute but um yeah i think the boss fight the tutorial was great it really helped introduce to you the game's concept you know how things will work like for example upgrading will be done via multi you know what i can get rid of these guys so i don't feel the pressure Um, let me equip. I'm gonna try this. Shark teeth, right? So you only have five of these across, the so that's interesting. Also, oh, that's okay. Yeah, that's kind of lame. That's not that. I got a thing of health for him. Rusty nail. Oh wow, that's pretty cool. So you can really rank up your damage. Like if I were to equip this with, yeah, I can really have some like high damage output. That's pretty cool. But um, 
Yeah, I think that tutorial was great. I love everything about that. Um, the shells. I think the shells being just random objects and not even being named objects that make sense. Like, what is this called? This is the little red cup. Like, okay, maybe they can figure out what a cup is, but like, they don't. It's not like a red solo cup. It's not like a shot glass. It's a. Well, I guess there are shot glasses, but it's not called anything more specific than a red solo, a little red cup. Which I think is a very nice detail. This. Okay. So. I love the shells. I love the fact that they all have different abilities. I th I don't know why. I thought that maybe I saw it somewhere, but I thought the whole thing was gonna be that you could put your shells on the end of your hammer and then use them or not on the end of your hammer on the end of your skewer and then use it as a hammer, which I wasn't able to do. I don't know. If it's just something that they haven't programmed in yet, or if that's something that they changed their mind on, but. Whatever the case is, um, I'd like to see something interesting like that happen, but I don't mind because I do like that the shells have their own utility and their own interesting way of being just, you know, utilized by having their own abilities to them as well as, um, you know, yeah, just really just having their own utilities and the fact that they have different healths, they have different weights, and, uh, different defensive strengths, like, Sure, two of them might have the same amount of health, but one has a four on the defensive scale versus six, which means the six will last longer than the four. So I think that's really cool that the shells are designed that way. Uh, the combat? The combat felt fine. You know, it wasn't anything revolutionary. I think it's definitely something that I'm intrigued to learn more about. Maybe as time goes on, when more updates are made and more is added to the game. Maybe we'll get even more elaborate in an interesting way that's fun, not frustrating. I don't know to call this frustrating. It's frustrating, but in a Souls game way, where it's like, yeah, okay. This boss fight is tedious, and you're going to keep doing it over and over and over again. Which, all honesty, I don't mind. So, I think mean, it's really interesting. But I, I don't understand what the different sizes of shell mean. Like, does a large shell move slower than a, a medium shell? You know, like, does shell size actually affect your, like, dodge ability and movement? Because I feel like it does. Because if I dodge with this, it doesn't feel very influential. But then if I dodge with the tin can, which is, I believe, a medium. Yeah, you there's more mobility. So I guess shell size determines your dodge. So you have to really argue whether you want to be defensive and bulky or agile and light. Which I think is a really cool mechanic uh, going forward. Um, one thing I want to say is, I understand why they gave us more than just the tutorial, why they gave us access to this whole other, uh, world. Uh, this whole other world, this whole other map that's, like, later in the game. I don't know how deep into this game this is supposed to be, but this definitely feels like it's later than the tutorial. It's where you get to, like, be about level 12. You know, you've gotten some upgrades, you have a talent tree going, which I think is really interesting having a talent tree. But, um, well, I appreciate them giving us that ability to experience the talent tree a little bit, as well as uh, deeper, uh, deeper fighting and a deeper understanding of the game by having this open world feel now, whereas, like, the tutorial was much more linear and, like, go forward. This, you can explore on the area, and I see that I have, you know, the path over in the by oil drum that you can go down, but you can also go over to the area I just was at and go off on a different route. There's multiple routes you can go and travel. And that's super cool. I really think that's neat that you have that open world aspect and you have that experience a little bit. But I wish they didn't do it because it made me have some really negative, like really big negatives about this game. And I'm going to explain to them why. I'm going to explain to you why. First off, grapple was never explained. I feel like if you're gonna throw me into a tutorial section where grapple is like supposed to be a thing now, I should know what it is because I never knew that red was grapple. When it came, and I didn't know how to deal with it. Like, are you, are you, I still don't know how to deal with grapple actually. I don't know why I said like it was past tense. I still don't know other than to dodge out of the way. But in some cases, you can't dodge out of the way. Some cases they are undodgeable. For example, the lightning throw with his um, vortex. You can't dodge his um. 
vortex, you can run away from it, but you can't dodge it, which to me is a very vital detail to know, like, how do I deal with this? Because I didn't know how to deal with it, and it made the lycanthrope fight just that much more difficult, and maybe it didn't need to be difficult in that way. That's one thing I have to say. I just I didn't like the fact that grapple wasn't was introduced as a thing without being explained as a thing. Because I didn't figure what it was until um Pekia utilized it himself. You know, when the samurai crab ended up using a grapple move after a right indicator, I realized, oh, it's grabbing. I didn't know what it meant. Because, you know, some of the crabs have activated grapple but i dodged it was like oh maybe it's a piercing attack maybe it's something else turns out no it's just a grab so that should have been explained if you're gonna introduce it to me i think it should be explained to give me a fair chance in dealing with it and as far as i can recall it never got introduced even in the tutorial the blue ability i think i don't know what it's called but the blue attack style got introduced as breaking your shell faster like it'll hit and it'll break right through your shell depending on the shell's health and your ability so i really didn't appreciate the you know grapple maneuver not being explained I wish it had been explained it would have been a lot better um a really big thing i've learned and i i really thought i was gonna enjoy more but i'm actually kind of really despising in this game is the platform the platforming is okay it's not great the hooks, the fishing hooks to like swing around, that was fine. I like that. That was really neat maneuver and an interesting way to introduce grappling in this. Because, you know, it's like, oh, we're just gonna give him a, a grappling gun? It's a it's a hermit crab. That makes no sense. You're right, it does. But a fishing hook, you can argue that, oh, that makes sense for hermit crab. Hermit crabs are in the water. I can finally pick that up. That was that was poorly played. I could not grab that till now. That took forever to grab. But, um... Yeah, like... It just... The sponges, I didn't love that. The climbing felt fine. Climbing up the nets was great. It was never really... Not, not great, like, in a... Oh, like, this is revolutionary. Just... It didn't feel clunky and out of, um... And painful to do. I could, I, could, I could do it, and it was easy. Um, but just platforming in general now is just the biggest issue. Like, you've seen me do it a couple times, and I can point out some areas. And actually, what I'm going to do is give me one second, and I'm going to TP over to where I can really exemplify what I'm talking about. So you know, so you can see the visuals of what I'm explaining. Because I can explain it. But explaining it versus showing you it are two very different things. So, give me one second. Okay, so we're back up. It's actually back up by the oil drum. Where I want to show you this. There's two things. You, you saw me getting mad earlier. One is... Uh, I'll, deal, I'll deal with these guys just really quickly. So I'm going to hold it while I explain this. Okay, actually, before you get into that, um, auto focusing after skewering. I don't like how it auto focuses when you like fish somebody. They were gonna be in front of you because you're facing that direction, but the auto focus makes it really hard to like fight and move over. Like, say like I'm on those jumps, and you saw me actually um, fall once because of it. Um, yeah, skewering and then immediately it focusing, forcing me to be focused on somebody doesn't feel great. It makes it feel really clunky, especially if I'm like trying to hook somebody off of a ledge so I don't get killed. Or they're in my way and they have ranged attacks so they'll knock me out of the air. It's, it's a little frustrating that if I skewer somebody, I have to deal with autofocus getting in the way and messing it up. So, 
you know, that's not, it doesn't feel good. The autofocus upon skewering doesn't feel good. It can make combat really infuriating in my opinion. Um, yeah. As for the platform, it's this. It, it's right over here. Right over here, officer. This is the crime I'm talking about. This is the criminal. These platforms exist too much, and I don't want to touch them. I'm going to touch it. Like, right now, I'm on stable ground, right? But the second I walk over here, it's supposed to be non-contact area. Why? Why is that non-contact area? That doesn't make sense. This is like, this... The way I see it, say these glasses got broken. These glass balls got broken. This is supposed to be area I can maneuver around for a fight. And, like, here's fine. But the second you just get a little too close to it. It's this one. Yeah, so th that makes it even worse. That It's not intentionally designed that way, and it's really bad design. Cause it's a very... It it's an area you're going to tread on. This, you can walk on. Uninterrupted, unhindered. It's fine. But this is not supposed to be walked on. Why? And I know it's not supposed to walk on because your character does that. It does a slide like it's non-contact area. It's a good bottle of moonshine. Can't break it. But yeah, like this... And th there's more than one of these areas that exist. Like the tire, for example. That is, I think, an even better example. Like the tire is hard enough to get on because it's rounded surface. But you go over here... There. That is like... A perfect spot to jump from one rock to the tire but it's a non-contact area so you slide right off of it it makes the platforming more difficult because like if you look at like yeah i can make it up this way but when i'm being shot at i don't want to have to do like a bit of like a neo like a minecraft neo jump where you go like that and just try to swing on through it i'd like to be able to go here for a secure jump and land it but if i do that i get punched and fall away right down that's not really well designed I think that's really bad design. Like, it, it makes me irritated. Especially when I'm having to deal with these two guys and I don't have any fish hooks. I can't get up here without being hindered. So, to have a point that I can jump onto clearly and be able to, like, jump shell, jump on the tire and shell, would be better. And then this. You can't reach that point from over here. You can't... You can't swim it. It's too long of a distance. And you can't, like gap your swim like you can't you know do this to drag up the meter because you'll drop too much to land on the platform you'll fall there's no climbing mechanic it's not like if you like you can ledge grab you can't ledge grab if you miss a platform you miss a platform you have to climb back up and try again so this being a and th this infuriated me the most that being a non-contact area i'm stuck now until i do that this being, those being non-contact areas feels really bad. And there's like a couple of those throughout the area and levels. And it's just like, why? Why are those non-contact? Why are those non-contacts, you know? It just, it feels bad. And it makes the platform a little bit harder at times. Cause like, again, if I don't have fish hooks, how am I gonna get over there? And even if I did have fish hooks and yank them off, again, I have to hope I slide off of I slide off of that rock and then can land on that one to jump onto there. It doesn't feel good having to hope that physics don't bug out on me. It really doesn't. It's not a great feeling. So I hope before the game fully launches that stuff like that is made in the actual game landable sub you know landable um surfaces surfaces you can actually go on because i'm telling you it, it wasn't it didn't feel good a lot of those times there was parkour like that that just did not feel good and it was very clunky so you know that's a big thing skewering they need to fix the skewering because i can like hook an enemy right but if i hook an enemy and yank him to me while i miss you know well, if I can enemy to me, it didn't happen in the boss fight, luckily. But like this guy, for example, I don't even know what he's called. 
Actually, how much health does he have? We can check that. How much health do you got? You are- wow, 900 health. Jeez. Jeez. I can remember put Chum away. I don't want Chum out. Jeez, I didn't know that. Wait, how did I have five? Where is he? Weird. Weird. But like... If I hooked him in some fights, and it actually happened in the last episode, if you watch episode three, there's a fight where I legitimately just keep fish hooking him because it's easier to fish hook him than the. I, I keep, again, every time you fish hook it, auto locks on, so you can't fish hook anything else. So instead of risking getting hit by that massive hammer and getting completely, you know, beaten to the ground by it, I just had to keep fish hooking him until he was down, so I had moments then. Get myself out of the ground by throwing a fish hook. And that's something that needs to be fixed before the game launches, or else that's gonna make fights really annoying. If I fish hook a guy mid fight, I can't be getting stuck in the ground or, you know, glitch into the ground. It's not a good thing. It just. It isn't. It's really problematic, and if it happens, I'm gonna be very upset about it. So, you know, that's that's one thing they need to keep an eye out and fix. And maybe I just got unlucky. Again, that should be a contact surface. But maybe I just got unlucky, but seriously, like, it happened enough times where I feel like it's not just me. It happened to me multiple times. So, really, I do hope that... Actually, I think it happened to me during the Legend Throw fight. Now I think about it. But yeah, in all honesty, I hope that it gets addressed and fixed before the game is fully released, because if it isn't, that's going to make the game a little bit worse, in my opinion. Um, the adaptations are neat. You know, it's like, okay, so I have the Royal Wave adaptation. Subject enemies in front of you with a massive swipe of the Dungeness claw Crab's Claw. I'm guessing that's a, one of the bosses we fight. Causing them to briefly take increased damage from all sources. It didn't feel that useful. I'm gonna be honest with you, like the umami charges, like depressurize, useful. Fortify, useful. Um, Drunken Claw, useful. You know, those are all really useful umami charges that came from your abilities. From Michelle's abilities, not even from the adaptations. Um, the adaptation just uh, maybe it's just because the one I had, maybe it's just one I didn't find a lot of use out of. But I didn't feel like Royal Wave was that useful. I tried using it on boss and it just was clunky to use because I had to waste Umami charges while well waste time swinging and dodging to hit him with it. And the damage didn't feel worth it. It didn't feel worth it on enemies either. Like this big guy, I think I used it on once in my spare time. And it didn't feel that rewarding. These guys, maybe it does, but... Right. Oh, will they spawn? They will. I don't even have enough. I don't have enough to actually hit them with a thing. But I just... I didn't feel like it was that useful. And maybe that's just me. You can even see, also, I just, you can see if there's another um, moon snail shell up ahead. Past the ship. I think... I think if I go over there, I'm gonna get to the boss fight. Almost positive. I'm gonna get to the boss fight. Because, yeah, they cut the DLC off there, so I'm not smoking going any further. But, yeah, like, I don't know if that's just me. Maybe it's just how I used it, but I didn't feel like the mommy charge was that useful. Not the mommy charge, the adaptation. Maybe there's more useful ones, maybe there's one just didn't click with me, but I just didn't find the adaptation Royal Wave to be all that enticing. It didn't really make me sit there and be like, oh my god, that's so cool. It was like, okay, I can increase my damage, but it didn't really feel like it increased my much. That's all I'm gonna say, it just, it didn't feel the most rewarding. But, again, could just be me. Uh... What else? I just want to see. This feels really nice. The one, the shell port, the design of it, 
You have grid system, I think it's great. The fact that you can get a shell collection to see what shells you've collected and what they do, like, it's nice. Like, morning butt, like, I can see what, what does the coffee mug do? What does banana peel do, you know? Like, and you need to see which ones are better. Like, the banana peel isn't as good as uh, the Cascadia roll, because the Cascadia roll ends up giving you a boost in your magic or your mummy attacks, but the banana peel doesn't. Also, has more uses have much than the man people so like, you can look and compare like see what shells do what which ones are best like the egg shell is not as good as the thimble next three hits next three hits but one has zero defensive one has five defensive one has 20 health one has 30. Th but this has a ton of stats actually i never noticed that the eggshell gives you a lot of boosters wow interesting I should try that, see if that makes it that much more different, if I can need boosters and all those attack stats, but like, I, I think the, the shell, you know, the see the second few of your shells as well, just, the fact that there's so many shell options with like varying things, I realize the shot class is a 10 on the defense, that's crazy, basically that's such little health, but, I think that's really cool, I think, the fact that you can level up in your like stuff, of course, I can't because I don't know no, uh, microplastic. But the fact you can do is really cool. And I'm looking forward to the things that might develop out. It's like maybe there'll be like side missions, like go to go back to the mushroom grove. Not mushroom grove, the moon jelly grove, moon jelly cave. I forget. But we'll go back to like this one area and you know do this. Go back to this one area and do that. Oh, I can try the mom version now. Like, that wasn't great. I could... I one-hit him, okay? But I've also two-hit him before. And I only one-hit him because Royal Wave hit him before I hit him. Like I said, it just didn't... It doesn't feel that impactful. Maybe it will. Uh, I also love this. The, the shell design, like... Okay, Valve isn't the most creative one. Let me see which ones are though. Like, sort of can. Okay, you just turn to a sort of can. But like, I think this one's my favorite, the Cascadia roll, because you you like blend into the actual sushi. Like you're you know where you are, but like at the same time, it looks like very intentional, like just a sushi roll. I think that's hilarious to me. I think it's great. I love it so much. I just love that it, like, as a typical hermit crab tail curl. You know, like, he just curls into it. I think it's great. I just think it's absolutely great. I absolutely love it. But, um... Yeah, I know when I do these, like, little reviews of games, they're not the most... You know, it's easiest to follow. Sometimes I understand I get a little tangenty and maybe I fall off the exact point a little bit. But I'm just trying to give my thoughts, my honest thoughts on it the best I can. And I feel like this game has a lot of potential. I'm really looking forward to the final uh, product. I mean, especially because, you know, like, I mean, look at that. The fact that... Uh, oh, wait, well, the valve actually doesn't float. Because it's a steel valve, whereas... The soda can does float because it's an empty soda can. It's air and water, but it's very light as an object. The skatey roll doesn't float. Interesting. I didn't realize that. So different shells actually do have different weights. Like that fell a lot slower than the skatey roll in the valve. I never noticed that. That's really cool, actually. That's a really neat detail. The fact that everything is its own physics weight. Like, the, you know. I wonder, what is it? how fast is this fall? Because this is pure plastic. It's a yogurt. I don't know if that's bugging. Nope, it's coming back down. But, like, it got carried around by a current. That's what it looked like. It, did. it got carried around by a current a little bit. So that's the thing I love, like the fact that every item has its own little bit of physics. Like this isn't even on the ground. This is remaining floating. If I yank it, 
it bounces up super easily. It won't even fall if I do that. Not really. It's just hanging there. He's he's really coming for me. I got lucky on that. I'm really glad I grabbed it when I did. Also, one really small thing. I don't know if it was me. I just didn't read, but I can swear it never told me how to run. I can almost swear I was never told you run by doing this. Almost positive I wasn't told how to run. That's just one thing I want to bring up as a concern. Like, why wasn't that mentioned? You know, why was the way you run never brought up? Look at that, it just floats because it's plastic. I think that's really cool. Yeah, I just I feel like I was never told how to run. I what? Like, see that that's what I mean. Like, these are mechanics that I think would have been really cool to be told. Can't blame me for doing it. If they, I, if they give me the tools, it's their fault. I'm just saying. If you give me the tools to draw it, I'm gonna draw it. Anybody that's watching this can't be like, oh, that was stupid and inappropriate. No, that's not my fault. That's Agro Crab for giving me the tools to do this. Oh, interesting. So you can't, if you're already shelled and you start running, you just move faster. But. If you do this, you go into a roll. Ah, oh, you can't do it. It's a little too hard. Can you do it with all the shells? Oh, that's so cool. I didn't know you could do that. Okay, hold on. Can you do it? You can't do it with this one. No. Which makes complete sense. Okay, hang on. If I can do that, I want to try... I know I've been dragging this out with the review and then everything, but... I want to do one last thing. If I can really do... God, I hate these guys in the water. Right here. I was out of the... I assume the banana pill is not going to do it. That plus I just don't want to fight the uh, sardine. Oh wait, you get momentum. Hold on. What? Yo! Okay, that explains that. Cause you saw me, I had to get really fancy with it. Did you gain momentum by doing that? Yeah, how would I, how would I have known about this? Oh, and if I keep my momentum, I could probably get that one last treasure, couldn't I? Interesting. Okay, hold on. I, I still know these are. That is, a, that is a whole other question. What is this? Con ball. Decreases footstep sounds. No way. So you can sneak. You really can sneak in this game. What? Oh, 
That's interesting. So you can. So that's another thing I do like. I like that you can. Like exploring the world more. The more you explore, the more things you can find that can be extremely useful. That can just change your gameplay and how you play the game. Like, say you want to sneak by some of these guys, you can get a cotton ball and make it so you're more effective at sneaking. I think that's really cool. That's a thing you can just find. That can I? I'm not curious. Where's the? I was. I wonder if you like slide or something. You know what I mean. Right. Well, I've been doing this for long enough. I just been rambling about my review of it, what I think of it, my hopes for it to improve, and what I find problematic with it. I've I, I given my whole spiel. You guys can't possibly care anymore. So with my little red cup, I'm going to now go for a ramp. Thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed this episode of another Crab Treasure. If, aww. Hang on. So I think I'm going to end the episode by ramping off, guys. Through this tube. I think it'll be a full one, a fun little way to, uh, to end the episode if I can get by these guys. So thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed this episode of another Crab Treasure. If you did, want to hit the likes and subscribe buttons for more content like this and just to support the channel. And I will see you all in the next episode. Bye-bye.